Welcome everybody to the first service of the year for the People's Church of Divine Prophecy. Got a nice crowd to hear today. I'm, I'm going to say it's for the food, not for Dr. Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, thank you all for making this a good first service of the year. I really appreciate that. Um, I'd like to have Bob wake the candles to start the service, even though we sang the opening hymn already. Symbolizing the unity of body, mind, and spirit. Silence your cell phones unless you're medical or law enforcement personnel. And I am Reverend Steve Adkins. Please stand for the invocation. And dear Father God, we give thanks for this day today, this gathering of those of like mind. May we all feel the peace of love and hope of spirit in ourselves, may we be able to share that with those around us by a smile, by a touch, by a thought. May we feel it multiplied as we do this. May we do this as we go forth from here today. We give thanks for love, hope, and peace. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. If you already sang the opening hymn, I'll just move along. There's people here that have deadlines. They have to be out of here by 12.30. So, and out of respect for them, I'm going to move the service along. There's portions of reading by the pastor, something where I speak about something that's happened to me my past week, and I put it into a spiritual perspective through the discipline that I am trying to employ in my life. As I said before, I'm trying to take the written word, which is spiritual knowledge, and make it into wisdom, which is acting and practicing outwardly. What came to me was a saying, I, I remember the saying, that fear is a thin stream through the mind. If left unchecked, it becomes a raging torrent into which all thought flows. And this is exactly how we get unsettled with our spiritual beliefs and our spiritual discipline. It's not this shock that attacks us all at once. It's waking up a little bit in the morning, feeling a little bit off and feeling a bit frustrated or put upon. And then going out to make coffee and you spill coffee on the counter and you get a little more frustrated. Then something happens, you step in a puddle of dog pee or something. And you're not really so and it was kind of funny, you know, last night I was woke up and we, we had to keep one of our Sharpane puppies because of medical reasons with him. And he's just a lovely little dog, but he gets the yipping in the middle of the night. And instead of getting frustrated, I woke up and I thought, what a wonderful thing to have such a nice house. I've got a loving wife in bed next to me and I've got a beautiful new wife that needs my assistance. And that's how I looked at that instead of getting upset. But it is something that we have to be on guard against because that's how I become unsettled. There's little things at a time, not big things. Big things are easy to handle. You know, you just dig your heels in and just take both hands and stand against them. But the little things that just one step at a time until you're acting in a fashion you can't imagine you're acting in. So I ask you to think about these things. Combat frustration, which does turn into fear which does turn into that raging torrent, which we can't seem to get out of. We find ourselves there unable to back out of that. What I do when I find myself confronted with this situation that I've managed to get myself into is I just stop and believe in the spiritual discipline that God is always there. God's, God's wealth of peace is always there. So if you just take time and believe that without needing to reason it, then you become at peace. And just a moment of peace is all it takes and amongst all the frustration and all the difficulties. So think about this in the new year. My 
one of my commitments, which I haven't broken yet, is to always think of a spiritual principle in my life. At the beginning of the day, at the beginning of frustration, get that habit in your mind. As soon as I get frustrated, what else could I be thinking of? And to keep yourself from finding those times when you find yourself in the middle of things. Please stand for the next ten and Bob Dunstone, Brother Dunstone, will be running the service from here on. I'd like you to just take some nice deep breaths and really visualize your importance, your importance here today with your loved ones. Divine Creator, we give thanks for your presence. We give thanks for the wonderful gifts you've given us. And we give thanks for all those challenges you've given us to us. We look forward to the coming year with happiness and joy in our hearts. And we look forward to each moment of every day with healing, with patience, and understanding. And we ask you to give us this grace and this service, and that the highest of the best will be with us. And as each of us seek the healing we require, we ask for that to take place. We give thanks. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Identification will have a sponsor now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, I got you. It's just here, please be seated. <laughs> <laughs> it's that kind of a service when like we have the opportunity to see spirit in the morning and, uh, and I'd ask the healers to take their place at this point. <coughs> We have Anne, we have Rose, and we have Judy. Dr. Thomas will be ringing the bell, ringing the bell for the prisoner to seat for the healing, so just the way you turn it to have. We have filled the seats now. As I begin the meditation, I ask you to take things off your lap. Place your feet flat on the floor. Find some time now to seek that inner guidance. Say no fear to anybody else in the room, just yourself. If you find it's too tight at the back, you can come up here to the front to where the little children were. So take some nice deep breaths and really feel the beauty of the gifts of the Creator that you have. Take some nice deep breaths down and deep. And feeling with each breath the beauty of your being. And I ask you at this time to see a beautiful bouquet of roses. All different colors of roses. And just take in that fragrance at this time that they give up. And at this time I'd like you to pick a rose for your family and see your lovely family all around there. If there's any of those that have had problems, to see them now, receiving the help they desire, receiving the gifts of spirit. And be thankful for family. And as we move on now, I'd like you to see another rose. And choose a colored rose for the abundance that you have. The food you receive every day. The gifts of the breath. The financial status, the financial corrections in your life. And see that rose and see the beautiful abundance. And if 
you seek more abundance this year, to feel that coming from this beautiful flower that you've helped to grow and understand with your energy, as you do with the abundance you need, you must provide the work to receive the harvest. Now let us now go to a covered rose that will help you ward off any stress or any negative conditions this year. Let's see this rose giving you strength. And just feel the odor coming off this rose. Beautiful, bringing sunshine into your life and feeling the color yellow. Let us move on now and see a rose that fits the need for your relationships and love. Also, there's healings come from this color. As you see this rose, and you bring in the odor, and that sense throughout your body, feeling the love of the universe, and the love of the Creator being with you, and just hold on to this rose, hold it in your hand, and feel all of your loved ones around you working with you at this time to better your life, to feel a bit more comfortable with who you are. Oh, what a beautiful gift. The gift of love of the self, the gift of love of the Creator. The roses now are building up in your hand and you're creating a lovely bouquet. As we move on now, I mean, choose a rose for communication as to how you wish to communicate in the new, new year. And just how smooth, feel how smooth this rose can be in your life at this time with communications with family and friends and those seeking your assistance to have the right words. And feel the Creator's gift of communication. Oh, what beautiful and peaceful noise we make. And as we move down, we place this rose in our bouquet. All of that within our hands. As we see the gift of clairvoyance and psychic ability and that feeling for others, we see the third eye. And we choose an indigo, color rose, and a beautiful sense of smell, allowing us to feel for those who hunger and thirst and those who seek love. <clears throat> Allow us to truly touch others with just our being. And again, place this beautiful rose in your bouquet. As we come to pick the last rose of our being and of our creation, As we choose the color for our Creator, a color that is powerful, I will complete the creation of your bouquet. And again, the scents, the odor, the beautiful fragrance. As you place it in the bouquet, you feel your completeness. You feel the beauty of your being and your beauty 
as part of the universe. Allow yourself just to experience that time of knowing that you are that beautiful bouquet of a sacred flower, a bouquet of love and understanding. And allow this to be the focus of your whole being of love. I didn't understand him. I never understood a word he said. And I went to many of his workshops to try and learn and become influenced. And I sat there and it was like somebody speaking French. And now we're pretty much unseparable. Uns really. I, I tuned in and we seem to work with one another. And it, it's just been a wonderful experience the past two years. And uh, even though he's part of my household sometimes, when he's not sleeping, <laughs> but it, it's when you have people that you can just share your, your everyday events with and your life with and, and not get not get sit on or challenged with every occasion. And that's the experience that I've had with this man. And I don't think I was aware of that years ago. But I didn't understand that true love that he has. And I, I say that with, with all honesty and sincerity. sincerity. One of the few peoples in my life that have showed honesty on every occasion, and Dr. Thomas is one of them. So uh, without further ado, I'd like you to introduce my friend, Dr. James Thomas. God bless you. Good morning, giving honor to our pastor. It is a pleasure to stand up here and Steve, I guess we have to start a kindergarten. <laughs> but Happy New Year! Happy New Year! And it is really a blessing, I have to say, that I am here even today. I turned mine off. Yeah. I can do something right. <laughs> now you try. <laughs> I've chosen and I spoke on the Lord's Prayer. And I don't know how many of you say the Lord's Prayer. But the Lord's Prayer 
as great meetings. And how many of you know about your energy centers, your chakras? Raise your hands if you know about your chakras. Oh, thank you, God. <laughs> So we have these seven energy centers, and these energy centers are work with our vibrations, with our energies, and they all have a certain meaning. And as we start, it will start with our Father, which art in heaven, is correlated to the sixth chakra which is right here, all right? The color is indigo. The symbol is the Christed being, true divine nature, impulse is self-realization, higher mind, and the note is la, L-A. Alright, so if you concentrate on that musical note, what it's doing, it's opening up your third eye. And bringing about more clairvoyance, more clear seeing for your own self. Hollow would be thy name is correlated to the seventh chakra, which is the top of your head, the crown. The color is violet, or some like to call it ultraviolet. The symbol is God. Some say old man. The impulse is the oneness, universal love, spiritual healing. The note is T-I, Ti. If you listen to the note, you can feel that vibrate at the top of your head. The planet is Jupiter, and it is the opening, is the silence. And when we open up this energy center, we go truly into the oneness or into the silence. Thy kingdom will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's correlated to the fifth chakra, which is your throat. It is color is lavender. It also working on, for all those women and men who have thyroid problems, so if you would cover your throat with the lavender energy, you would make the breakthrough and help you to, and it's also called the voice of the soul, and it is the gateway between lower self and higher self. So who in the back back there has a thyroid problem that I'm looking at? So, I'm getting this by somebody over there. But it would help you to concentrate on lavender and raise up your vibration and help heal that energy center. Then the note for the for the thyroid or for the fifth chakra is S O so. So when she's playing that, you should feel a vibration in this area, if you just concentrate. The planet is Uranus. These are all from Edgar Cayce's work, by the way. Give us our daily bread correlates with the first chakra, our root chakra. And the color is red. Symbol is the bull or the ox. And I don't know why they have California here, but they have California. 
The impulse is the earth. The note is D-O. So concentrate on your root chakra for just a minute as you place that note. <coughs> you can feel the energy. And uh, it goes to revelations, the opening of our being. The next chakra, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtor, right? debtor, correlates with the third chakra, the solar plexus area. The color is yellow. It is the lion. The large cat. It also, this area here is the seat of the emotions. It is also has to do with your whole digestive system, all your internal organs. So by flooding yourself with yellow, you can create a lot of healing going on in this area. And so many of us carry so many things in our emotional bodies that by working with the color yellow, we can release a lot of those emotions. And the musical note is M-I. So just listen to the note for a minute. Concentrate on yellow. And the planet is Mars. And lead us not into temptation correlates to the second chakra, the sacro, the color orange symbolizing being to the earth. The element is water. The musical note is R E. So if you listen to the musical note, it's activating your spleen. It's helping with your digestive system. The planet is Neptune. But deliver us free from evil correlates with the fourth chakra, the heart center. The color is green. Symbol is the eagle, the element is the air, the impulse is human love, healing. The note is F-A. To correlate to your heart center. So, to send out brotherly love, sisterly love, all from your heart center. The planet is Venus. For thine is the kingdom correlates back to the fish chakra, the throat chakra, back to the color <laughs> lavender, the dove, the crucifix, impulse varies, divine will, the planet is Uranus, and back to the same sounds, and power, and the power correlates with the seven chakra, the crown center, the color is violet. And the glory forever and ever goes back to the six chakra, the color is indigo. And the note is L-A, La. So we have gone through all of your centers of your body with the notes. So for some of you, this should help you in your healing work. Because healing is one of the most important things that we have. And by working with the healing energies, we do the energy work to bring about a perfect balance within our own bodies.
Bob's looking there and saying, what are you going to do next? <laughs> well, just to bring a little humor into this room, all right, and to make everybody laugh, it's one of those things that uh, I like to do is to make everybody laugh and to have fun. So, I did this in Casadega, and that. More importantly, we're doing it here. <laughs> but Bob doesn't have his phone turned on. Just imagine I have my phone turned on. Just imagine that Bob has his phone turned on, and it rings. All right, ding a ling a ling. Yes. Oh my God, it's God. Okay, mm -hmm. this is very interesting. As just the other day, I was telling someone that I have conversations with you, and here you are. Well, now that I have you on the phone, I have a special question for you, and I'm going to. I'm going to find that special some. When am I going to find that special someone? Robert, Robert, Robert. <laughs> I am here for your soul growth, Robert, not for your love life. <laughs> okay, okay, I get it. My question is this: Why do I have so much fear? What do I do about it? What's happened to my love life? Here? <laughs> Diane, I mean, Robert, Robert, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> there is no fear, Robert. For in the Bible, 365 times it says, Fear not, for I am always with you. So, you should have no fear, for you are never alone. I am always with you, Robert. I'm afraid of shadows in the dark. I'm paralyzed when I drive over very high bridges. I'm afraid of my car breaking down on one floor. I have fear. And I just life. answered you, Bob. <laughs> fear not, Bob. Where are you? Where are you? <laughs> We're doing the job. Everybody's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you? Right here. Right there. I don't know I think they're on the different pages. <laughs> I always have a babysitter, believe me. <laughs> okay, okay, I get it. My question is this. Why do I have so much fear? I already read that. Doc. I know, you're down to here. <laughs> you know, I'm afraid of Get your program right. <laughs> so it boils down to this, all right? <laughs> well, yes, it actually does. I get it. I do. I do have other questions, though. What is this thing we call Christmas? See, and I wasn't supposed to speak about Christmas, all right? So I did it this way. Robert, it's a myth. It's a fable. It's a story. Yes, there was a great man born, but it was not born. In, he was not born in December. He was actually born in March. He is a Pisces. Yes, known to us as the Christ. He is a miracle worker, he is a healer, he is a prophet, just like you, Robert, and everyone here in this congregation. Okay. <laughs> For the Christ is with you, you, Robert. Whoa, there! I was born in March. I am a Pisces. Does this mean I am Christ? <laughs> yes, Diane. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Robert. He is in your heart center. Now, God, I have a question that I don't think you will answer. Why, why, why do you take away our loved ones? They are good people and they are kind to turn the page over. Other people. <laughs> why do good things happen? 
Bad things happen to good people. Why do you do this? I want to know. This is important to me. I need to know. Robert, I know you've lost a lot of loved ones. Your mother, your father, you have their pictures all over the house. <laughs> but they were here on earth to complete certain things, Robert. They were here to show you unconditional love, which you have. They sh tried to show you patience, which you certainly don't have. <laughs> they tried to show you knowledge, which a little bit of that has come up. <laughs> they tried to show you emotional balance, Robert, which is certainly not emotionally stable. <laughs> so, and to help you along your soul progression, to help you to realize that every day I am with you and I am God. So every day remember, Bob, I am right here with you. <laughs> okay then, answer me this. Why do our loved ones on the other side of life come to visit us? Is that for real? Bob, you should know that they're for real. They come to help you, first of all, in your soul progression. They're here to help you to know more about the continuity of life. And to understand, especially, Bob, your being here on this planet to show unconditional love. That doesn't make sense. Thank you, God, for all the information. <laughs> May you truly be blessed with this con May you truly be blessed, blessed Bob, <laughs> along with this congregation and with... The holiday season, we wish you all a very happy holiday season and a happy new year. Thank you and God bless you.